This is the biggest shipment of jewels we've had in a long time. Find out how the boys are getting along. Oh, Mac, take a look and see how the boys are. Tell me they've been fired. No, they're just away on a vacation. All right, brother, hand over the package. I have strict orders to deliver this package to either George or Harry, personally. Well, how are you going to deliver it to them? They're away hunting or fishing. Come on, hand over the package. Quit stalling. Nothing doing. I'll take that. Come on, get in here. I tell you, I don't know anything about it. You fool. The gang ran out on you, now you're trying to cover up for them. Why don't you come clean? You're a detective? Why ask me? I'm telling you once more, this isn't a rap for robbery. It's murder. I know. You've been telling me that right along, but you can't pin it on me. I didn't do it. I didn't even have a gun. That's what you say, but we know different. Don't we, Chief? Well, we've got the statement from that messenger saying that he saw him fire the shot. No, oh, there's no use wasting any more time with him. He wants the rope, let him have it. I didn't do it, I tell you, I didn't do it. I didn't know there was going to be any killing. When they put that black cap over his head and start adjusting that noose, put that out back of his left ear, then lead him out onto the trap, he'd wish then he got. I'm going to give you one more chance. Who are they? I don't know their names. I'd tell you if I knew. I never seen the guys before. But you know where they went. You knew the arrangements for the getaway. Where'd they go? Come to think of it, Magpie, they don't hang in this state anymore, do they? It's the lethal chamber. Yeah. But I'd rather have the wrong gas is bad. I don't blame you. Hanging's a sweet death compared to gas. First you start gasping for breath. Then paralysis starts creeping over you. Starts at your feet, grows up to your knees, then travels like a searing flame till it numbs your brain. You know what it's like to take that walk down the long corridor to that small door that leads to the finish? You count every tick of the clock, every measured tread, Knowing you're walking that last long mile. Stop it! Stop it! I'll tell. I'll tell. Where'd they go? We were gonna meet in Edgetown. Town on the border. What are the names of these fellows? 
I don't know their names. I swear I don't. All right. Take them away. I'd appreciate it if you fellows would keep this confession out of the papers for a while. Well, what's the next move, boss? A trip to Edgetown. Send Joe with us. I knew he was a jolly fisherman and he landed here. If it hadn't been for him, we wouldn't have known about the diamonds. Yeah, but what good will the diamonds do us if Carson gets after us? Oh, what are you squawking about? He ain't here yet, is he? Well, I'm not going to be here when he does show up. That's an idea, boss. Yeah, but not a good one. Might not be good, but it's better than having a noose around your neck. Listen, boss. Carson will break Joe just as sure as we're standing here. And I'm not waiting until he does. Yeah, that goes for me, too. Fine bunch of gunmen you are. Now, one of us knows the guy. If the minute his name is mentioned, you all want to hightail it out of here. Now, listen. If he gets within 50 yards of this place, we'll blast him. Yeah. Now, does anybody else want to leave? Things of his love as he strums and Job and I'll, I'll pay you back on it, Bill. Yeah. Get together on. Nah, go on, get out of here. teach you not to be so smart. Just a minute. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Yeah? What's it your business? Well, I'm making it my business. Come 
I'll sit down. I'll buy a drink. Thanks. Yes, sir. What's your pleasure, gentlemen? Bottle of seltzer for me and why? No. Scotch. federal men and get away with it. Let's pack up and get out of here before Carson arrives. So you're chiming in with the rest of them, eh? I thought you had some nerve. What's a copper ever done for you? Well, this one has done plenty. He got me out on probation. And right now, I'm a free woman because of him. Oh, Jim, let's get out of here before it's too late. I'm not running away from any man. I've got a good business here and I'm staying. Now get out there and sing your song. Tell that man over there, I want to see him in my dressing room. Yes, ma'am. Did you like that song, old man? You bet I did. And when she is singing out about yearning heart, I'm thinking of my girl. You don't mean to tell me you've got a girl. Sure, I got a girl. She's just as good looking as I am. Pardon me, sir. The entertainer would like to see you up in her dressing room. Thank you. Help yourself to a drink, old man. I'll be back in a minute. freedom to you. And I've always wanted a chance to repay you. Well, let's not talk about that. Do you know your life is in danger? It always is in my business. Yes, I know. But your life is in greater danger here than anywhere else. There's a crowd here out to get you. And they'll stop at nothing. Who are they? I can't tell you that. Well, you don't have to. They're really after me. They've come out from cover before long. I don't know why they should be. 
I'm not down here after any in particular. That is no white man. The fellow I'm looking for is a Chinaman, or a Eurasian, who poses as a highly educated Chinaman. He's a well-known fence. Deals in diamonds, precious jewels, stones, and so forth. You haven't seen anyone answering that description around here, have you? No. What makes you think you'll find him here? It's common sense and reasoning. This is a natural spot for anyone who wants to smuggle valuables out of the country. By the way, what are you doing down here? The last I heard of you, you were singing in the big towns. <laughs> I was, but they made it too unpleasant for me. I'm sure you're waiting your time here, Captain Carson. And the longer you stay, the greater the danger. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to stay a little while longer. I'm sorry you won't take my warning. But I'll do everything I can to avoid trouble. Fine of you, Mitch. Now, you've been nice enough to give me a warning. Let me give you a piece of advice. Get away from here and go back where you came from. I'll see they don't bother you. That's impossible. Carson's here. Where? Up in Midge's room. How do you know? I heard him talking to her. Well, you know. Better let me go first. you introduce us to Captain Carson? Well, I was just coming in to tell you about him. Oh, yeah? That's what you said. Shut up, you. All right, what about us? Oh, we've nothing to worry about. He's not after us. He's looking for a Chinaman who smuggles precious gems. A sort of fence. Yeah, I don't believe it. He's trying to pull a wool over your eyes, Midge. He's here to get us, but we're beating him to it. Listen, boys, all of you. If he should disappear, we'll have the whole Federal Force down on us. Lay low for a week or two. I'll try to convince him the Chinaman he's looking for is in some other part of the country. Now maybe you can and maybe you can, but we're not taking any chances. Come on. What are you going to do? Get rid of him. What do you think? That's him, out there at that table. Huh? You go on out the back and cover him from the balcony. Right. You stay here and keep out of trouble. you try anything like that, somebody's going to get hurt. If I were after any of you fellas, I've got enough on most of you to send you up for a long time. But I'm too busy just now to be interested in small fry. Never mind. 
Get going. So fidgety. Oh, I'm just nervous. About Carson? Yes, if you must know. If he gets away, it's all up with us. The quicker we pack and get out, the better. Now, don't you worry. The boys have probably got him by now. Well, boss, our worries are all over. Good. Did you have much trouble getting him? We didn't get him. Let the dope here tell you about it. We caught him this morning near the rocks riding Carson's horse. Yeah? I'll spill it. Well, I didn't kill him. Last night after you forced me to go with him, I was riding along the river bottom. Somebody jumped off from behind one of the rocks and took a shot at him. I just did get away. Who was it? I don't know. Looked like a Chinaman. Chinaman? Why, that must be the Chinaman he was looking for. Yeah. And then what? Well, I snuck back and I saw him pick him up in his arms and throw him across his horse and ride away with him. So I got Carson's horse and I headed towards town, but the boys here picked me up. You can't arrest me for it, because I didn't kill him. Oh, we know you didn't do it. Don't we, boys? We know he didn't so kill him. Oh, oh, don't, don't you worry. worry. Take him out, boys, and buy him a drink. Oh, thanks. Come on. Come on, Dobie. Well, I guess he was looking for a Chinaman. What are you going to do about that dope? He's been hanging around here for a week, mooching drinks. I'll leave him alone. He's not hurting anyone. Say, you know that old Hanover mansion? Yeah. It's been empty for a long time. What about it? Uh, it's no longer empty. It's been turned into an oriental shop. Not a cheap joint, either. It looks swell, just like a big city place, run by a Chinaman. Did you say a Chinaman? That's what I said, boss. And not one of those washy-washy Chinamen, either. This guy dresses like a white man and looks plenty smart. Wonder who he is. We'd better find out. Hey, foolish. Come here. Uh, you call me? Yeah. Do you know the old Hanover mansion? Oh, yeah. Well, go snoop around over there and see what you can find out. If I find out anything, shall I let you know? Of course, you dope. Now talking to Mr. Sam Sung, dealer in Chinese antiques and jewelry. Think I can get away with it, Mike? Bye. Get away with it? Why, you look as much Chinese as any Chinaman I ever saw. Have you heard anything in town about this establishment? Oh, plenty. Everybody's wondering what it's all about. Well, up to now they haven't seen me, so I suppose this is a good time for Sam Sung to make an entrance, eh? Well, you get down to the Lafayette and wait there for me. You know what to do. All right, Chief.
Look who's here. Anything I can do for you? I'm the proprietor here. Oh, thank you. I am honored. I, too, am a proprietor in a small sort of way. I have just opened a place of business in your town. Is that so? What kind of business, Mr... Uh... Sam Stung is the name. A dealer in rare antiques, precious stones, or any other article of value. Where do you expect to find precious stones around this neck of the woods? Is not your town situated on the border? It is only in towns along the border that one is apt to find individuals who have articles offering for sale that may not be offered in other localities. In what way may I help you? You might assist me in the procuring of a suitable servant for my establishment, or someone to do the work about the place, but with sufficient brains to take orders, but not too many brains, you understand? I got it. I think I know just the man for you, too. Hey, pull it! Did you send for me, Mr. Wilson? Yeah, Mr. Sung here has a job for you. This is the man I was telling you about. You better tell him his duties. Oh. Uh, you understand janitor work and keeping a place clean, I presume? Yes, sir. And uh, the customers, ladies and gentlemen, coming to our place of business, you would be able to treat uh, courteously? Oh, yes, if I had to. Uh, very well, then, uh, on the recommendation of Mr. Wilson, I will uh, take you into my service. You may wait outside. Thank you. Thank you. Someday I may be able to return a favor. Say, Mr. Stone, do you think it's wise to open a place of business here with the police after you? And what do you know of my business? Oh, it's all right with me. But I happen to know there's a Captain William Carson, federal officer, looking for you. Unfortunately for Captain Carson, he found me. Well, what do you mean? Those who have passed on to their ancestors cannot molest further anyone on this earth. Hey, come on over and meet the boys. Boys, this is Mr. Sun. He just informed me that Captain William Carson is no more. Well, say, that calls for a little celebration. It sure does. Will you spit a bottle of wine with us, Mr. Sun? Uh, thank you. At another time. Just now, I think I should return to my establishment and give my new servant some instruction in his duties. You will excuse me, please. Good day. Good day. Say, with Carson out of the way, why don't we get to the stones? Oh, we can't. Not till Luke gets here. How long before he gets here? Any day now. Why do we have to wait for him? Can't we do it some other way? What would you suggest? How about that Chinaman? I'll bet he'll handle hot stuff. You mind at that? Do you want to tackle him? No, not me. Let Midge do it. How about it, Midge? Well, I could try. See what you can get on those. But don't let him know they're any more in town. Just let him understand that you can get your hands on some. All right. How do you do? I'd like to see Mr. Sung. Yes, ma'am. You uh, wish to see me? You're Mr. Sung? I am. Will you please sit down?
You are the lady who entertains at the Lafayette, are you not? Yes, I am. And to what do I owe the honor of your visit to my humble establishment? Well, you're a dealer in rare objects. And uh, I was curious to know whether you would be interested in buying some precious gems. I might be interested in the purchase of these gems if they were of sufficient quality. Have you them with you? Yes, I have. You speak very good English. Ah, but you see, I was born in China, but educated in San Francisco. You are thinking, perhaps, of the dialect, which was very funny, too, used by the early Chinese who came to this country. But most of that has gone out with education, even in China. But all of that has been changed since the Chinese Revolution. At the time, the Chinese lost their cues. To make an American witticism at that time of the revolution, not only many of the Chinese lost their cues, but also lost their heads. This is a very, very clear gem, exceptional quality, but would require additional cutting to make it marketable at the present time. And. Uh, You are interested in that shrine? Why, why yes. But why should you have his personal things enshrined? We Chinese worship not only our ancestors, but also honor and enshrine the memory of a brave enemy. You say a brave enemy? Then it was you whom Captain Carson was seeking? That was my honor, and although I very much regret the passing of Captain Carson. I also rejoice in it because it leaves me free to conduct my business. I will give you $2,000 for those stones. But they're worth a great deal more. Assuredly. They are worth perhaps three times that amount. But to whom else could you sell them? You know our very benevolent Uncle Samuel keeps a very sharp eye on the border. I'll take it. You show great wisdom. And if you have any more such gems, I would uh, consider their purchase. No, I haven't. But I know someone that has. Then if you will recommend them to me, I will deem myself greatly in your debt. Good day. Well, the trail's getting hot, Chief. Only warm, my dear Magpie, warm. It's got to get a lot hotter than this before we can clamp down on them. Well, a little trip to the Lafayette, do a little gambling. It might raise the temperature a little bit. Say, that's not a bad idea. Chinamen are supposed to be good gamblers anyway. Tonight, my friend, we go to the Lafayette to woo the goddess of fortune. I wish you'd quit quoting them high flutin' tootin' words, Chief. All in good time, my boy, all in good time. Get a load of that. And look what he did to the foolish. Ha! 
I wonder what he wants. Good evening, Mr. Sun. Good evening. Well, how do you find your new servant? He has slight possibilities. Well, uh, what can I do for you tonight? I have come to woo the goddess of chance. Fine. We're just starting a little poker game over here. Would you like to join us? I am particularly fond of your American game of poker, but I should like liberal players. Any special limits? From the lowest regions of Satan to the highest of the seventh heaven. Meaning the sky is the limit. As you so aptly put it. Fine. Boys, is it all right if Mr. Sung joins us? Well, certainly. Sit right in. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, what'll it be? My favorite game is draw poker. Deal them out. One card. Two for me. I will see that. And raise an equal amount. Sorry, I can't stand the raise. I will merely call. Full house. Ace is over queen. That is a very good hand, but I am very much afraid it is not good enough. I have four kings. Gentlemen, do you wish to continue to play the game further? With what? I'm broke. Me too, I'm through. I'm clean too. Then in that case, may I thank you for a very entertaining and profitable evening. Good night. hundred thousand dollars in ice and not a dime in cash. Now, what are we going to do about some dough? I wonder if our friend Mr. Sun would go for the rest of those rocks. Say, Mitch said he might. I'll pay Mr. Sun a visit in the morning. Why'd you take him to such a clean port, Chief? I thought you'd want to get friendly with them. <laughs> I do, but you see, they're convinced now this gentleman's a pretty smart fellow. Furthermore, the sooner they go broke, the quicker they're going to try to peddle these jewels. Oh. This little section tonight's going to help them right along the way. You don't think they got wise to me, do you? Not a chance. Why, you could start a Chinese laundry here and it would get wise <laughs> to you. What's the next move, Chief? Uh, next move will be coming from certain gentlemen who are wishing to peddle Certain jewels to unsuspecting Chinamen. <laughs> <laughs> These gems are of first quality. Have you any more like them? No, I haven't, but I know where I can get many more. All perfect gems. And could you bring them to me here for examination? No, the man that has them is across the border. But he'll sell, if you don't ask too many questions. Huh. The great Confucius has said, to hear much speak very little. Silence is a friend who never betrays one. You may tell your friend I am a true follower of Confucius. 
How many of these uh, are you ready to buy? Whatever amount your friend wishes to dispose of. Can you raise $100,000? A great amount of money. It would require 24 hours notice for me to have that amount in American currency. My friend will meet you at the border. He's willing to bring him that far. That is satisfactory. I would meet him at any place you designate. He'll have an armed guard with him. Well, assuredly. It only shows the wisdom of your friend. By the way, do you mind if I bring the young lady from whom you bought the other two diamonds? Oh, certainly not. I should deem it an honor to meet the young lady again. Then it's a deal. Day after tomorrow at sunrise. Ah, my friend, you Occidentals, you jump to conclusions very rapidly. Too rapidly sometimes. You say, it is a deal like that. It is only a deal after I have thoroughly examined the gems. Oh, naturally, naturally, you'll have that privilege. Thank you. You will show the gentleman to the door, please. Well, see you later. Well, we're doing all right, Magpie. Yeah, but I don't like it. When do I get rid of this kimono? Whenever the gods shall decree that our enemies shall be delivered into our hands. Oh, why don't you talk, United States Chief? Why me and getting slant-eyed now from hearing you talk that way? Very well, my dear Magpie. As a matter of fact, it won't be long now. They fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Unless I miss my guess, we'll be headed back for San Francisco before very long. I'm ready. When do we leave? What's the matter? Getting lonesome for your sweetheart? Oh, no. Uh, no, she might be getting lonesome for me. <laughs> oh, Romeo Magpie, eh? Well, all I've got to do is figure out a way to get a hold of $100,000 in United States currency to pay for those gems tomorrow. And what do you want me to do? Well, you rustle together a bait of chop suey, will you? I'll rustle something and the date's going to be chop suey. You know the plan. We get the money, but we keep the diamonds. Just the four of us. What about Midge? I'll bring her with me. I'll get going. All right, I guess. Got a surprise for you, Midge. We're about to get rid of the diamonds. Oh, really? Who's going to buy them? The Chinaman. The Chinaman? Yeah. Come on, he's waiting for us. Men all set? Oh, that's swell. Now, you stay here. I'll ride in and see those fellas. Well, Chief, there's at least five of them in there. I know it, but they're not going to do anything to me when I tell them you've got the money. Well, suppose something does happen. <laughs> I don't think it will. But I can tell beforehand if I think it's going to get rough, I'll 
Well, I'll get some kind of a signal to you. Now, if you want to see a first-class uh, Chinaman from San Francisco riding horse as is done in China, you watching me. He clapped. How do you do, gentlemen and uh, lady? Have you got the money? Oh, surely, but uh, not on my person. Oh, where is it? In the hands of my servant. Yeah? Where is he? Oh, he is not far away. But you do not think I would be so foolish as to carry the money on my person when the transaction has not yet been completed, did you? All right. Here's the sounds. The light, I am afraid, is very bad here. That may be in the shadow. The stone appears much better. How about it? Everything seems to be quite all right up to the present time, in as much as I have examined these few. You know, there is an expression that there is honor among thieves, but it is a statement which I am very often inclined to doubt. So in our profession, we always must be sure we are not receiving the double cross, and I really wish to assure myself that everything is, as you Americans say, on the up and up. Uh, if you would please standing over there, because there seems to be some interference with the light. Thank you very much.
You guys want a jewelry. Here's a pair of bracelets for you. Get going or I'll blow your buttons off. feel better on your feet now. She all right, Chief? Yeah, she's all right. Just stunned a little bit. Hit her head on the rock, I guess. What'll I do with these fellas? Well, take them over and put them on their horses and we'll herd them into town. All right, get going. I suppose you want me, too. Yes. ride down here about a half a mile, you'll come to the road that takes you to Randsburg. It's a narrow road, but it's straight. Take it. 